You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Hemlock Grove After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Hemlock Grove After Show. Oh, yeah. Creepy. <laughs> Bing is for doing, and here we are doing another AfterBuzz TV show. And this is our first one for the amazing Hemlock Grove. And, yes. and the, the creepy Hemlock Grove. And this is season one, episodes one and two we're going to cover. And those are called Jellyfish in the Sky and the Angel. I am your host, Sean O, and I am joined here by three lovely ladies. They're my co-hosts yeah. tonight. <laughs> Let's start over here to my right. Hello, everyone. I'm Marissa Serafini. I'm Tiana Hobson. And I'm JJ Jurgens. And we have a variety of topics to talk about regarding the first two episodes of another unprecedented, awesome Netflix original mm -hmm. series. Um, that, that has all 13 episodes online. We are pacing ourselves, or at least we're trying to. <laughs> it's going to be hard yeah, to not really jump hard. ahead, but we'll try. <laughs> it's, it's hard for me. I know yeah. it is. Uh, these are the following topics we got. We got a cheerleader is killed. Hmm. Mm. By what now? <laughs> and uh, Romans, a playa. And then we're going to talk about Christina, and someone has sloppy handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I noticed that, too. Christina, <laughs> Christina yeah. spreads rumors oh. about Peter being a wolf. I thought that said severed. <laughs> <laughs> it's and my handwriting, we'll sorry. Yeah. We'll <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. We appreciate the effort. And, uh, and then in episode two, we're going to be talking about, uh, actually, uh, before episode two, we'll talk about awkward moments between the two episodes. And we're going to talk about Peter turning in episode two. And we're going to be talking about an angel visiting Letha. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and get started. Cheerleader is killed, ladies. So what, what's up with this? What thoughts on this? Let's start off with that, huh? Of course, it's a cheerleader. <laughs> right? It's in high school. It has it's to all right be. if we so lose another that. cheerleader. <laughs> Just They're a dime a dozen, you know. It was. Kind of, it's kind of like the typical horror movie, like the way yeah. it starts. You know, like ooh, this naughty cheerleader. She's she wants to be all sexy and she has to die, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. kind of like admiring her from afar. That's typical scene where she's down practicing and he's you know looking longingly at her. Yeah, and did we even like get the cheerleader's name? They said they probably said her name in the episode. Uh, Brooke the Bluebell. Yeah. yeah, Brooke. Brooke Bluebell. Bluebell. It was Thank said you. later on. The then we found mm -hmm. her, and, and to skip ahead a little bit, and yeah, well, she does die, but we find out when, when she dies that her name is Brooke. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she um, she seemed to have a thing for the teacher, Miss. Not even seen. Hot it's for like teacher. Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of obvious that she had a thing for the teacher. Like right when she's up there, the teacher's up there, like giving her her lecture on the stars, and she was just like looking so starry-eyed at her teacher, mm -hmm. right? Starry. Yeah. At first, I, at first, I thought she was genuinely into the lesson, and then I had to rewatch the scene again after I saw the the note in the book. I rewatched the scene. I was like. Oh, she was making eyes at the teacher. Okay. <laughs> I'm with it now. A little slow, but I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it got, you know, her her rendezvous with her got interrupted. Just where I thought there was going to be some... Dude, that would have been racy for Netflix to have some <laughs> lesbian eroticism between a, a high school student and the teacher. And a teacher. And a teacher. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of um, female relationships going on in the show. Oh, are you? This is our just resident little, book reader. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, I have read the book, so um, I'll t try to drop hints here and there without spoiling anything too much. Yeah, JJ, you mentioned earlier that, okay, so uh, so a Roman, he seemed to have a little bit of a connection with the cheerleader. Gosh, what was her name again? Brooke. 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 That was the yeah. character's name, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so he seemed to have a little bit of a connection there. What do you think that was about? Do you think he's been with her before sexually? I want to say, I want to say no, but I mean, we saw the picture of them on her Facebook or wherever where they were drinking together, but I don't know, for some reason my gut tells me that they didn't, that he just like had a thing for her. 
Yeah, it, it could have been that too. When when I saw it, I felt like she was kind of scared of him almost. Like she was Love teaching it. the kids, doing their pom poms, and mm -hmm. when he waves, it was really ambiguous. Like the reaction she had, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what did you feel, Tiana? Um, I felt like me, I felt like they knew each other. I wasn't sure how well they knew each other. But, I mean, I saw a glimmer of, like, maybe she liked the attention of him watching her because she seems like she might be into that sort of thing, people watching. Mm -hmm. I don't know. At first, I thought Brooke was the girl that Roman was sleeping with at the very beginning of the episode. That's who I thought it Then was. I went yeah. back yeah. to it, and I think they're actually two different, completely different girls. Yes. I, yeah, I have to agree with you. I had to watch the beginning a couple times because I thought those girls were confusing. And then I also thought the cheerleader looked very different than the girl in the classroom. Yeah. So I yeah. thought I had to go back because then I see later on when she's running, she has the cheerleader thing on underneath her sweatshirt. So I was like, oh, it is the same girl. But that kind of threw me at first, too. So I had to go back and watch. Right. I think what gave it away for me were her bold eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bold, good word for it. <laughs> they're very, they're sexy, yeah. to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, so she she ends up getting like nailed in her car. She falls out and she gets killed. And it, do you think that the house that she got killed in, that little like that little playhouse, was, was it? Was it, it looked like a dog house in the middle of a playground. <laughs> yeah, and the, it, I thought it was a dog house at first. My second thought was, why did you stop running? Me too. Right. Because no. something's chasing right. you. You don't go into this tiny house where like there's no way out yeah. at all. That was just a dumb move. Was, okay, you're done. I thought the same yeah. thing. I thought, you know what, run into a building, run into, but to run into that was the dumbest move ever. <laughs> and <laughs> she's, a, she's a cheerleader, and she. <laughs> I'm sure, she's, no, I'm sure she's athletic. She probably could have ran to a good distance to find help from someone. That field, though, it seemed like it was in the middle of nowhere, to be honest. It wasn't, I don't it think it was, park. was it near a playground? I don't think it was. It was in the I think it the was a day. In a playground. Yeah. yeah, the next day when the police were around is when they kind of panned out a little bit more, and you could see there were a couple other play things, so it wasn't quite as random mm -hmm. to have it there as I originally thought yeah, that it was. And the whole reason that somebody found it was because there was a jogger, right? She yeah. was going yeah, by there, her. and you see her with her guts, like, all spilled out. Uh -huh. Which was... That was intense. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, um, in the show, we see uh, Brooke uh, with her bowels out, you know, um, but in the book, we actually get two parts of her body. So it's like, you only see the top half of the body. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. in the show, I thought it was interesting how they still show the body. It's still kind of all together, but it's just um, her guts are literally splayed out. You know, that's actually <laughs> funny that you bring that up, Marissa, because when I watched the trailers for this show over and over and over again on Netflix and on YouTube before actually watching the show, and I actually had that feeling. I felt mm. like they kept showing the body over and over again, and it looks like it's been completely severed in half, mm -hmm. where I, right. I thought that was the case, but here we see, like, you know, like yeah, we all mm -hmm. got to see. We just see a disembowelment. Yeah. This one. Yeah, so anyway, it seems like the local police are a bit of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I mean, hey, let's stop that guy because he's walking by. I thought that was a little random. He looks like a gypsy. Let's stop him. Yeah, let's stop him. I mean, clearly people are going to be walking past the park. It's the morning. People are walking to school. Like, that, was, that wasn't suspicious activity yeah. to me for the police to be like, let's go get him. But I guess it is a small mm -hmm. town. He's new there. So maybe that's why. Plus the rumors about him. Yeah, the rumors about, about him. being a rebel are already spread out. Like but, everyone knows. But do you think that the adults in the town would also hear about these he's the werewolf kid rumor? Well, I don't think so. I was trying to figure out if this is one of those towns where being a werewolf, like, people have heard of it before. Because you know how there's some places where, you know, that kind of stuff is, you know, no one would ever believe mm -hmm. it. But here the rumor is spreading so fast that people are believing it. So I'm sort of wondering if this town is some place where there's sort of magical creatures like that that mm -hmm. do exist mm -hmm. within them and everyone knows about it. Well, you got to think about how the rumor was actually spread from the beginning. Christina Mendel, who mm -hmm. is a teenager in high school, she told it to her friends first. So that's going to go through the grapevine faster than it will go through the adult community, mm -hmm. I think. And then obviously parents always hear from the kids about rumors. So I think that it's got spread in the younger generation first than the adults. Yeah. 
So uh, we fast forward a little bit, and it seems like the police don't have much expertise on this, like scientifically, right? Like may maybe they don't mm -hmm. have this gruesome murders in the town, and they end up bringing it to uh, to the local scientist over at the Godfrey. Mm -hmm. Was it the research building, the institute? Yeah, Godfrey. Yeah, Godfrey, Godfrey, Godfrey Institute. 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 Mm -hmm. Godfrey. Is it called the institute? Yes. Okay, yes. good. Well, I got it right. I was going <laughs> to say like industries, but it being a science place didn't sound as fitting. <laughs> so they end up bringing it there to Dr. Price. Am I right? That's that's Dr. the guy's Price. name. Johannes yes. Price. And he's played by uh, Joel De La, De, La Fuente. De La Fuente. Yeah, that guy's awesome. Just just the way he, when we had, okay, we had Norman Godfrey there. Mm -hmm. And just the way that Norman was so antsy and anxious and he didn't want to use Price, it makes me feel like there's some mm -hmm. kind of antagonism between them from, yeah. from the past, yeah, definitely, right? definitely. And just the way that he looked at him, like he just, the doctor just looks down at the photos and he looks back up at him and he looks down again. It, just, <laughs> it was it made Norman livid. Yeah. Now, I agree there is tension there and there's some backstory. But um, another thing is that the way Dr. Price speaks, he's very intelligent and whatnot, and he's somewhat condescending to yes. other people. He's so smart that anything he says, like other people probably won't understand him, so he's kind of rude in the same at the same time. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, agreed. <laughs> Uh, let's you know, unless you guys have anything else to add to that no, topic, nope. let's move on to the next one. Roman Godfrey's a player. Oh. <laughs> that he is. So the, uh -huh. this guy. and I think it just completely sets the tone with the show, and with you know in the first episode, the first scene is he's it's him, it's him, like he's eating that ice cream, and on his face he's just got this blank. It's almost like a blank stare, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You think he's spacing mm -hmm. out of the wall or something. He looks out the window and there's this girl walking by. And he goes out to the parking lot and he does dirty with her. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he does something yes, he does. like creepo status, right? Mm -hmm. He ends up. Yeah. Co cut. Oh. Cut, he cuts cut his, his finger, his finger. Mm -hmm. with a razor. I thought he was going to cut I her. Thought I was waiting yeah, for him I to kill her. I was like, too. yes, it's going to start off with a <laughs> death, like, in the car. I was going to shoot out her neck. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to have, like, an arterial gush yeah. <laughs> all over the place. He gets yeah. a rush from cutting himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then he put what looked like a circle on her shoulder, which is, I'm sure, it's an illusion, right? Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yes. To, to the, that serpent symbol that we have, which is Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Yeah. What so, is it? Ouroboros. What is Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Did, did we do, Tell anybody, us what this is. Anybody yes. do research on it? Did you, yeah. Marissa? I did a little bit. I couldn't understand I, what they called I, it. I didn't either. Uh, Ouroboros is actually a symbol of life constantly in a cycle, continuous, not like... A lot of people would get it confused with, like, the life of a phoenix, where a phoenix where it dies, but it gets reborn again as, like, a baby and whatnot, or as an infant. But um, the snake is constantly, like, you're dead, but then you're brought back to life, and, like, constant, the constant circle of, from death to life, death to life. Life still continues. Oh. Yeah, they, I did a little bit of reading on it too on Wikipedia and my good friend. <laughs> and, uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot of depictions with it, and, and one of the things that I saw also was it in in alchemy they used it too with mm -hmm. the alchemist trying to find gold and whatever and turning things from you know something that's pr practically worthless right like mm -hmm. lead into gold or whatever. Right. And it's also almost similar to being like the yin and yang in in uh, Asian culture, which is very interesting as well. But uh, hmm. yeah. Anyway, so that. so we actually Roman. He, he just how many women was he with this episode? Ooh. He was with. <laughs> but he, he was. I with, think it's sad how we have to think about yeah. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> prostitute. He was with mm -hmm. this girl who seems like a <laughs> prostitute. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, was he she, paid her. Was I'm pretty sure she was a prostitute, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. He paid her. I paid wanna, her a lot. I want to say that maybe she was just a high school student who's like getting into the prostitution business. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounded like, I mean, clearly well, she knew his name, so then she, he paid her more to, like, forget his name. Mm -hmm. And so I got, like, it was a, I don't know, do you think it was the first time that this happened? No, no. it seemed like yeah. they were familiar. Yeah, I thought so, too. Like, this has gone on. and mm -hmm. At least one other time. <laughs> <laughs> At least. <laughs> okay, and then the next person he has a little encounter with is his mom. Which Olivia is Olivia Godfrey. Really creepy, man. Very like creepy. she she wakes him up, right? And he's getting tailored in his own house, which shows how rich he is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And she while he's while uh, while he's getting tailored, Tiana, what what does she do to him? Do you remember? Oh, doesn't no. She comes, she like yeah, reaches she comes behind yeah. him in this weird manner and yeah, yeah. She, she like reaches behind him while he's getting his like vest on or whatever and she's like showing him photos on her phone but she's like embracing him in this weird way from behind 
creepy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think my mom ever does that with my brother, so <laughs> <laughs> just saying it's not normal for moms to do that. That is a very couple move to yeah. come up from behind someone for that backwards, awkward hug. Right, so... And she had a couple of them. Like, she also, when he was in the doorway of the kitchen, you know, she, like, kind of put her hand on his cheek and, you know, just the kind of looks. She had a lot of little creepiness in there. Yeah. And yeah. she was really kind of jealous that he wanted to go hang out with his cousin, yeah. Letha, instead of going shopping with her and kind of gives him the guilt trip to come out with mm -hmm. her instead. I mean, there's just, yeah, creepiness all yeah. over the place. I liked... All right, um, and we'll see it in the future, but... For this episode, you see uh, Olivia constantly dressed in white. And I think that's really interesting mm -hmm. because her character, um, she seems as actually a very dark character, yes. yet white usually symbolizes purity and good. Whereas, so that contradiction of elements is very interesting how they played with that. Yeah. I, I like that's that. A good point. That's a that's a good metaphor to bring up. And maybe it has something to do with the Ouroboros stuff when we're like the yin and yang. Yeah, and like, true. yeah. And also, uh, Olivia kind of seems like a black and white character. Things are either good or really bad with her. She yeah, she's funny. she's good. She's enjoying her time at mm -hmm. home. She's drinking. She's getting plastered at noon time. <laughs> yeah. What a life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the you know, next episode, it's like a totally different story. Yeah. But we'll, t we'll talk about yeah. that when yeah. we get to the next right. episode. We'll <laughs> but, um, yeah, so do you think that there is an incestuous relationship between Roman and his mother Olivia? I'm not sure that anything has happened, but what really kind of freaked me out was when they did the flashback um, with um, Roman's dad and Olivia talking and how he asked, you know, well, what about Roman? And she says, he will always be mine. That kind of freaked me out in a weird, like, possessive yeah. way. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's very, like, she thinks he is hers. Like, she owns him. So it's going to be hard for her to let him go. Mm -hmm. And... See, and that's the thing. Uh, Olivia has a lot of control issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. That we'll see. And there was something else uh, I wanted to bring up in that flashback. I thought it was really important, too, where uh, Norman's there. Uh, and yep. this is Olivia's brother, am I right? JR. Yeah. Or, yes. No, no, no. no, no. Wait, okay, Norman's what's the relation? Brother. Oh, okay. Norman's brother is JR. Yes. Okay, JR's there. Yeah. Yes. All right, so, okay, so, but then they have the Godfrey name. She married into the Okay, Godfrey so name. she married into the Godfrey yeah, name. Yeah, she married JR. Oh, okay. Got into the Godfrey this whole time, name. I've been thinking. <laughs> uh, you thought that was her brother? I thought that was her brother. Uh, so that would be I, really weird. I'm seeing so much symbolism, like, oh my goodness, like in the next episode, I'm on, like, it's just going to be defunct now that oh. we have this. But I thought it was like, okay, they're brother and sister, so they're doing this stuff, and then he sees their children. And doing stuff, so it's like, oh man, what have I done? I've rubbed <laughs> off on them. <laughs> well, um, anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm glad Thank that. God. Yeah, I'm glad there's not too incestuous <laughs> things going on in this show. We can only handle so much. Right. <laughs> but okay, all right, let's defunct that. So anyway, did you guys have anything else going on with uh, with him being a play? Oh yeah, there was one thing. Well, yeah. With the, the the girl who went to the bathroom with her tampon, mm. she was on her period, right? Right. And he ended up following her. Roman ended up following yeah, her. And, and and he was eating her out mm -hmm. in yeah. the stall. Mm -hmm. In the stall. And he, he puts down a bloody hand afterwards. Wow. Roman has a thing for blood. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he so, does. I think the worst part of that was that Peter was outside the bathroom listening. <laughs> very, <laughs> yeah, very right. creepy. Just, you know, he knew what was going on. I could understand being there for a second or two. Yeah. Like, oh, is she in trouble or is everything mm -hmm. okay? But then to stay there and listen, that was kind of weird. Did think it was pretty funny, though, when he's like, yeah, this is what it looks <laughs> like. <Exactly. laughs> that was a good moment. Yeah. Very teenager. Yeah. Kind of love it. Speaking of the incest, though, we also kind of talked about the weird relationship with his, oh, uh, his cousin. cousin. You know, yes. he just, it's just too close and like, like I was at first when they were at the when they rented out the um, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yeah, and they're all three. Oh, they're a couple. I'm like, no, wait, they're cousins. And yes, yeah, so there mm -hmm. was a lot of strangeness with that relationship as well. Yeah, I actually, it's funny that you mentioned the name of the the park because when she said I rented out Pennsylvania, I thought she said Pennsylvania. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I was like, dude, she, what? How did she rent out the whole state for them to go like, <laughs> drive around in and play? But the story does take place in Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, they're in Pennsylvania, but they also bought 
Pennsylvania, and <laughs> I was I was confused for most of the first episode with that whole thing. When I went back and rewatched, I saw like a cup or something that said mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh okay, there, yeah. there we go. And the M is like yeah. the roller yeah. coaster, mm-hmm. yeah, which is very clever. It's a but clever I, name. I can and cannot kind of believe their relationship. Uh, I mean, Letha and Romans, because I do know cousins who are that close, even though they're not brother and sister, but they are close, like brothers and sisters. So I can actually can believe that realistic relationship between them. But it does get a little questionable. Yeah, like when he's mad at her for being pregnant, you know, he gets so mad. And so yeah. I just, I don't know. It, it, it didn't it. come, yes, it didn't come off as like, you know, I'm I'm mad, I'm going to beat up whoever did this to you type of mad. It was like a jealousy mad. Yeah, you the shut way he your played lying it. whoring mouth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Very strong. <laughs> <A little. laughs> So do you think that they've had some sexual stuff going on? Because didn't she say something like, hey, you want to go to my place after the park? Didn't she say something like that at the end? Or was it him? I can't remember. One of them said something, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it might have been him. Something, but, I mean, I think she also did tell her dad, at least, that she was still a virgin. So maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't but know. Well, maybe she doesn't consider c- the cousin. <laughs> cousin. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> Cousins no. don't count. No, that's still weird. Um, I mean, I get that they're close because I'm close with my cousins, but we're not close in a creepy, maybe there's more than just our cousins going on yeah. kind of way. It's it's very ambiguous, and I, I wanted to actually say that at the beginning of the show today, <laughs> at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> this show can be summed up in one word ambiguous yes. <laughs> seriously there's yeah, so much like stuff it. going on and i want more i want to know more yeah. so i can piece things together better and it's it feels like it feels like a book really mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. that's what i really enjoy about this show it's just like oh give me more give me more yeah. anyway uh that's uh let's let's actually talk about our itunes account and our fans you, you know we've been talking about some things we're not sure about them go ahead and tweet at us give us comments and reviews and be sure to rate you know, and give us like five stars because you know what? We deserve it. Am I right? <laughs> and we're a brand new show. Yeah. Brand new, so help us get up there in the stars. That's right. And yeah, and give comments like that you want to hear us talk about because as you can see, there's a lot of things we're going to be trying to figure out. So yeah. we'll take any comments you have to help us too. That's right. And tell a friend because it only takes a minute to tell a friend about After Buzz TV's Hemlock Grove podcast. And uh, yeah, that's, that's right, JJ. So go ahead and rate you know in the rating thing you can comment and tell us what you guys want to talk about and you can even like tweet at each of us so you can tweet at me at sean austin on twitter and marissa i'm at seraphini tv i'm at tweet t22 and i'm at jj jurgens yeah so um our next topic and also before you start um we are also live streaming on ipads iphones and androids now too so you can watch us live on your phone that's exciting. That's right. I used to have a problem with that. When I, whenever I would be at home, I'd be like, oh, man, I want to use my iPad so much okay. to watch After Buzz TV. And I was like, problem oh, solved. It's, yeah. <laughs> now it's HTML5 enabled, right, Marissa? That's right. Yeah, Woo-hoo. so now we can all watch it. I love it. it. Yay. That is right. Moving yes. on up. Thank goodness. <laughs> that we are. So, uh, Chris, Chris, what was that again? Christina. Christina. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, she spreads, spreads, spreads rumors. Spreads, spreads rumors. Yeah. That's right. Not severs. Not severs. <laughs> we gotta work rumors. on legibility. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't she get spreads cut. them. She didn't get cut. <laughs> also, <laughs> thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> so Christina spreads rumors about Peter being a werewolf. So this, right when she meets him, it's just a, such an interesting dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. And I think at the end of their conversation, she even calls him weird. But she's the <laughs> yeah. weird one, am mm-hmm. I right? Yeah. yeah. She's yeah. He comes out of nowhere, starts questioning okay. him accusing him of being a werewolf because of his fingernails was that his finger yeah. length. his finger length yeah yeah because the index finger and the middle finger were apparently the same, same. length or really close to the same length so that means you're a werewolf just double check my <laughs> make sure i'm good <laughs> i did that last night i was like <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm good i'm yeah, good everybody we're all good yeah. we don't have we're any werewolves here. on the panel <laughs> okay good no but it's funny you mentioned tiana his fingernails because they were really long they right? were really yeah. long that's why i focus on the fingernails when they did the close up i was like man his nails are Kind of like claws already. Yeah, and he's right? human. 
That's weird. It must be a gypsy yeah. thing. Gypsies. Yeah, it might be. The Never cut with, their nails. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with Christina is that she, in the book, she's 13 years old, so she's probably in high school as a freshman, so mm -hmm. she is young, she is precocious in that matter, and she's, she wants to be a Russian novelist or something to that effect. So um, her character is kind of reporter-like and asking mm -hmm. all these out-of-the-blue questions, so it's very true to character for Christina. Do you think, this question I had, because they kept talking about Vince, right, that lived there before? Cousin the, Vince. Cousin yeah. Vince. So do you think, I was trying to figure out the history, was he something before, so she was already down there, like, being inquisitive because they moved into his place and question her, or, or, right. or well, not? Christina is, um, you know how when we see Peter first move to the trailer uh -huh. and we see the house over the hill, yeah. mm -hmm. that's actually Christina's grandparents' house, and Christina stays with her grandparents from time to time. So he, um, she knows that Peter and someone else has moved into this trailer, and she knows that Vince is gone. See, that's uh, what I, so I, I there got. There is some relationship there. That's so. what I, I figured that she was somehow coming coming from there. But then I just wondered if there was something with Vince, you know, which obviously we didn't get in the first two mm -hmm. episodes, that to made her make her really be interested in them or know that like uh, if he was a werewolf or how. Because how know, did she know about the, the finger? finger thing? Yeah, because that's hard yeah. to notice. Maybe her when and you, Vince were friends and. They talked, or maybe she saw him out there in the woods doing something and got yeah. suspicious of things, and that's when she kind of started questioning everything. And then knowing that Peter is related to him, werewolves, clearly mm -hmm. the bloodstream runs, you know. Yeah, it runs in the family. Runs in the family, so that's why she's like, oh, you must be a werewolf, uh -huh. too. Yeah. So aside from... from um, Peter, which is a very fitting name, by the way. Is that an allusion yeah. to yeah. Peter and the Wolf? Peter and the Wolf. That was exactly <laughs> the first thing I thought of. Yeah, seriously, right? So what did we learn about him besides that? His index finger and middle finger are, you know, really long, and he's potentially a werewolf. He's a thief. He's a thief. <laughs> he's a thief. Yeah. Like, like gypsies, they're known as, you know, pitpocketers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, additionally, we learned a, a bit about his mom, right? Is that Linda's his mom, right? Linda's yes. mom. Yeah. Okay, so we learned a bit about his mom. She is a, anybody? Drug dealer? Yes? No? Yeah. You guys don't think so? I wouldn't no. think so, no. Dude. No. Vince was a drug dealer. Dude, she like... And that's where she found his drugs. Uh, yeah. She, yeah. But she found the drugs and she said, we're in business. I'm taking that as she's going to start a business now. I well, took it as she's going to use them all. Yeah, that's <laughs> <what I laughs> She's like, oh, I'm hooked up. <laughs> but, but did you notice that later in the episode, there's a scene where... Uh, Olivia, Olivia, she's using that yes, same yes. Like, yeah, that like droplet same. thing, and she's putting them I mean, in her eyes, and she's she, apparently she's getting an eye off of that stuff. Yeah, and Would, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, well, I was just gonna say, and um, clearly Linda and knows about Olivia and her family because she warns Peter to stay away from the Godfreys. Yeah. And she also said something really important there. Did anybody else catch that? Where she was at the she table, she mad. Something. She yeah. Um, She's, I think she said, they're my business. Yeah, they're Stay my business. Stay away from them. And oh. that they are the business. Um, actually... She called him something else negative, didn't she? Yeah. Too? I, Which, oh, uh, uh, Phil. 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 Yeah. Yeah, she's like, Phil. But um, in the book, I believe that Cousin Vince actually dealt the drugs to Olivia. Oh, okay. So that's, therein lies that connection hmm. with those two. Well, I feel like Linda's probably going to be continuing that because what what else is she going to be doing, you know? How, how else could she be getting this much money this quickly just moving into the trailer, right? So I feel like there is that those drugs, probably LSD, it looks like, right? She's dropping it into her eyes. That's like the typical thing. They're seeing, she's seeing hallucinations afterwards, the jellyfish in the sky, which is where the title, <laughs> the title comes, comes from. from. It's, it's that, I'm sure, and it's also at the end, the memorial. And they're like putting up all the... That was what, a nice the, juxtaposition. Those yeah. Yeah. yeah, those floating mm -hmm. lanterns floating into, lanterns into the, the sky. the memorial. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. We also learned that Peter's kind. He, like, warms up to Sally and, and kind of, yeah. you know, becomes her friend. And He's got a softer that side. That was cute. That's right. <laughs> he, really, he does. I was he, really happy that he, he seems, did that. Yeah. yeah, he seems like a really chill guy. Like, he doesn't care anything mm -hmm. really about people. He doesn't really have a lot of judgment, even mm -hmm. though a lot of people judge him. Mm -hmm. So he's like, whatever. Yeah. Kind of has that mentality. Yeah. Actually, JJ, her name is Shelly. Oh, I'm sorry. Shelley. What did oh, I that, say, Sally? You said Sally, but that's okay. Oh, no. Shelly. I, I was going to talk about that, too. It's total allusion to Frankenstein. Am I right? Yes. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Mary Shelley. That's what I thought mm -hmm. of. Yeah. And <laughs> I thought of something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, she, when she took off her, um, her wig, right? 
bald yeah. as a cue ball, and she has that huge, humongous eye. Mm -hmm. So what, eye. What, why do you guys think that happened to her? Hmm? I'm, well, now that you bring up LSD, you know, <laughs> being dropped in people's <laughs> eyes, maybe her mom was doing that while she was pregnant. Uh, no, but I think that the Godfreys have some sort of, or at least Olivia, clearly is hiding something. She's something, because I think it's something that's been questioned, even Jr. Her former husband mm -hmm. was questioning, you know, like, what are you? What are mm -hmm. you? And so until we find out what she is, maybe that will explain why Shelly came out the way she did. Now, the what mm -hmm. are you could be the physicality of it. Like, what are you? Or it could be, like, what are you? Are you a wolf? Are you a vampire? Are you whatever, it, it, you know, she like is. sort of sorceress. Mm -hmm. Like, not mm -hmm. human, right? Or it could mm -hmm. be maybe what are you like? Are you evil? Like, the metaphysics of it. Mm -hmm. Are you evil? Are mm -hmm. you Are you good? What? I can't read you. You're hot and cold. <laughs> like, like most women are. <laughs> Hey, you're outnumbered here. Be careful. <laughs> I, I got a wife now, so I can say that. <laughs> Not if you want to keep I'll her for very that. long. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, was there any else, anything else that we wanted to talk about regarding Peter and him being a gypsy werewolf? Anything? No? Let's, mm -mm. let's go ahead and move on to our awkward moments. So for episode one, awkward moment that I saw... Uh, and I know you guys, this, I'm like totally like, hitting you guys with this out of nowhere, but uh, this is what I got. When I thought Peter had no pants in the hammock. Did oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys feel that way? When he's in there, the, the, this little girl, right? Christina, Christina walking walking she walks right up to him and he's like covering himself and he's like, uh, and he kind of, he kind of like. He had boxers on. He did have boxers yeah. on. Yeah. But I felt yeah. like he was like just. Pants hanging out. Pantsless. <laughs> yeah. like, hey, I'm in my own front yard here. I can oh, be great. naked if I want to. <laughs> my common dude. Nothing trailer. wrong with a little naked sunbathing. <laughs> <laughs> what sun? Yeah, you know. It's foggy as hell in Hemlock Grove. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, and we talked about this a little bit, but Roman with his mother t two times during the episode, mm -hmm. awkward looking incestuous mm -hmm. stuff right there. Um, Roman's, uh, Roman's dad, we talked about this too, asking the the... Uh, asking uh, Norman, saying, "Hey, are you screwing my wife?" Yeah. Are you, and, he didn't, yeah. and he didn't say those exact words. Yeah. Are, you, are you effing my wife? No, no. He, said, he said, "I, I, know. I know." Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. He was like really direct about it then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, th this will segue us into episode two. But in episode two, uh, Roman commenting to Letha, saying, "His cousin is very beautiful." Right? Wasn't that awkward? That was a little yeah. awkward, too. Yeah, who are you? What have you done with my cousin? You're too beautiful to be my cousin. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. And their kiss, yeah. hello, in the car. Was it on the cheek? It was on the cheek, but it was, I, I mean, maybe because they had Norman watching from the window, so that's why they went in, like, so slow. But it was a very sort of sensual Mm -hmm. Kiss on the cheek, I thought, for cousins. Was it like... Totally agree. Was it almost like corner to corner of the mouth touching? Was it that close? What, what did you feel? I didn't see. I didn't think it was that close. It was it was just the way that they were moving towards each other and maybe lingered for like half a second on there, on the cheek and then backed away. I agree, yeah. and I think having Norman watch it mm -hmm. too made it even more like that, like he was the, the father, like afraid like some guy was, you know, gonna hit on his daughter. So it made it even more creepy and mm -hmm. awkward. Yeah, and they, they were like, oh, what, he can't even come in the house? <laughs> <laughs> no right. flowers? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's just my cousin taking me out for the dance. <laughs> I agree. I think the relationship is just a little bit too close for comfort. And, and I feel, um, I thought Norman, I keep wanting to say, like, I'm, I'm about to get their names mixed up. Roman, Norman, Roman, Norman. Yeah, right. they're very close. Yeah, so I, him, I think, did he cry a little bit, like, at the bar? Like, he was about to cry or something like that? And then also Olivia, for sure, crying in the car over him. That was, like, so awkward. Like she had yeah. the guy, she had the bartender going down on her, and then yeah. right after that, she starts crying when he mentions something about Norman. Yeah, yeah. She, but the bartender did get into personal backstory of Olivia about her relationship with uh, Norman, and that obviously strikes a chord. So um, there is some backstory there. Mm -hmm. True that, and we'll find out more as the story develops. A small little other awkward moment for me, I think, was the young girls um, g going in the dance with their tutus and then talking about how they were going to get laid. I was like, you look like you're 10. <laughs> yes, seriously. And they act like they're 10. Yeah. 
<laughs> they didn't even look like they were freshmen in high school. No, no. no. And I was like, oh. It was so <laughs> creepy. And the, the father was, or I don't know if they were twins or not, <laughs> like, right? The, the, I think, the no, they, yeah, I think they, they are, are twins. twins. Okay. They are yeah. twins. Okay, they look like, yeah. one of them looked like she was a little bit off. So I was like, are, is yeah. she two yeah. years younger? Fraternal. They could be fraternal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, lastly, Olivia, Norman, and Shelly all having lunch together. Awkward moment. Am I right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. Where the, the waitress is yeah, like the waitress asking is her. Mm -hmm. Kind of yeah, hitting yeah, on yeah. him and protecting her, Shelly, yeah. at the same time. Yeah, but again, it also shows Olivia's control issues when mm -hmm. the waitress asks what will Shelly be having, and Olivia's like, she'll have the normal would be... What was Salad. Um, some satisfactory. Steak, some yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, whatever yeah, yeah. meals she mm -hmm. was going to have would, would be satisfactory. And okay. then she repeats it twice. Yeah. And so that's just control issues, oh, even over what they're going to eat. Mm -hmm. So little things like that. Yeah, I think she wanted her to have meat. She's like, you mm -hmm. need your meat or something. Yeah. And, and she said she wanted a salad. Uh -huh. Yeah. She motioned that she wanted the salad. Mm hmm. She can't really talk. That was. <laughs> she can't I was speak. Like, oh, like, yeah, and I feel so bad for her. Like her hands are bandaged up. She got that weird eye going on, yeah. and she can't talk. She's. I mean, it. I thought she was Frankenstein walking down the hallway the first time we saw her. Yeah. Did not at all expect in the, a second episode to hear the tone of her voice. Did, for me, like, did not match oh, at all yeah. what yeah. in my head I pictured her thoughts to be like that. Yeah, and, and and to go off of that, I was just thinking the same thing because Shelly physically can't speak, but in her emails to Norman that uh, she's very intelligent yeah. mm -hmm. and very well spoken, and she can clearly write well. And, you know, mm -hmm. she's very literate, and but also that goes with fact like episodes one and two in the book, the characters are very uh, well spoken and intellectual and whatnot, but in the first episode they. A lot of the scenes didn't really happen exactly as it did in the book. So these characters, they kind of had their own way of speaking in the first episode. And then in the second episode, most of their scenes are, like, almost word for word for what's happening in the book. So, like, so they already had their pre their speech in the first one. But then in the second one, it seems a bit different. So it kind of is like they had the personal input and then uh, the then they had the author's kind of yeah. speech the narrator yeah the narrator's mm -hmm. point of view so th i think that is a little bit com conflicting with the characters especially in the first two episodes when we're still trying to learn everybody and what's mm -hmm. going on so yeah so that was interesting thank you marissa mm -hmm. so <laughs> episode two let's talk about the juicy stuff please peter turns am Ooh, i right wow what a scene amazing. yeah <laughs> That was amazing. So that was the most awesome. un unique wolf transformation I have ever seen. And I've seen quite a few TV and, and films like with, with werewolves in them. And oh my goodness. So this was <laughs> totally like great. pretty much if, if I was to sum it up, how about let's go with you guys first. How would you guys sum up this wolf transformation? Can you sum it up? I don't even know how. <laughs> all I know is right at the beginning with all the cracks and the neck, those sounds. Like I was like, oh, it was so, it was just so, I don't know, just real like and violent and just like you know i think in other shows like twilight, twilight. or whatever <laughs> like you know it makes it look so cool or so, like this easy transition you know and i i liked this one because i thought it showed probably the turmoil and how hard this really is for him to go from being a person to this and I, it just wasn't such an easy transformation and i like seeing him struggle through it all and it, it was I, I think I watched half of it through my fingers <laughs> because I was scared of what might happen next. But I agree. I thought that the sound effects and everything that went along with it was great because I felt it in every part of my body. Mm -hmm. I felt like my bones were being crushed. I felt like I was like a beast was literally ripping out of my skin. I thought that was a creative way because we haven't seen. Oh, there, oh, there oh. it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not something that we get to see a lot of. Yeah. So. All right. Thank, I, thank you, Stephen, for putting that up. Yeah. Um, I liked it because it was very visceral and very physical and you can yes like you said you can feel the pain but the thing I the way that they conveyed it it showed like the beast within coming mm -hmm. out and just literally ripping apart and devoiding itself of any humanity yeah and completely separating the the human Peter to the werewolf and yeah. I think that's where the whole Ouroboros comes in because it's like this creature that's inside and it's being reborn. And then, yeah. of, of course, I haven't seen the third episode, but later on, he, how is this going to play out when he transforms back into a human from yeah. a wolf? 
It's, didn't he eat? He, yeah. He likes his, his, own, his skin? own skin and yeah. he must inside. Have been, yeah. He must have been really hungry after the transformation. I mean, really. I bet the uh, the eyeballs were like jujubes uh, for dessert. <laughs> that part, wow. <laughs> another interesting My eyes are watering yeah, right now. The eyeballs cool. come out right now. Uh, another interesting thing is um, there was an interview with Eli Roth talking about this transformation scene, and he said that they were still working on perfecting the transformation even when they were shooting episode 13. So they had this whole time just to make this transformation awesome. Wow. wow. Yeah. They did a good job at that. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely the teeth and the eyeballs coming out, that is something I did not expect to happen at mm -hmm. all. So it's just like he grows completely. That push yeah. through right there, oh, right at the end where the mouth kind of pushes through, too, I thought was amazing. Yeah, and then when he emerges, and he's not some kind of monstrous wolf. Yeah. He's a real wolf. I liked that, like, too. Like, he totally blends yeah. in. He doesn't look like... He, he looks special in a way, but it's subtle. It's a mm -hmm. really subtle special looking wolf and then when just when he eats yeah he eats his own skin it's just so like whoa he is hardcore <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what i thought don't mess with that wolf right. <laughs> and i like the version of this wolf that they showed because it showed like this wolf isn't going to attack you unless it's provoked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not like where we have this false notion that like all werewolves are gonna instantly attack whoever's around you do you think he had any recognition when like Roman was like Peter like said his name and there was like a little look in the wolf's eyes do you think there's any sort of I kind of felt of like he, he was is? I kind of felt like he still knew who he was yeah. because even Linda before he tran um, changed over said something about like oh he's my he's my little boy you know even when he's the wolf he's still my sweet boy I think is what she said and so that's what made me think that it was safe to have Peter there Mm -hmm. Because they knew that he still knows who he is when he's the wolf, which is why he knows he didn't kill Brooke. Hmm. Now, how do you think he is transforming into a wolf? Why? Like, how, do you think he was scratched by another wolf? Was he infected? Was he born this way? What are your guys' thoughts on that? I think it's family. Yeah, yeah I'm going to um, go with born that way. His grandfather, mm -hmm. Nikolai, who we've heard in the first episode, um, Calderash Rom Roman, mm -hmm. and... Um, that whole family line of uh, gypsies, but I'm not sure about the werewolf per se, but. So I'm, I'm thinking, you, you just mentioning gypsies again, Marissa. I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, gypsies, old world, right? Europe, vampires, mm -hmm. Transylvania, <laughs> all Romania. that stuff. Romania. They bring, because they're gypsies, they're very transient people. Mm -hmm. They brought this, maybe this came with them, the their fun. lineage, and they brought this werewolf family to the states and that's why it's in pennsylvania what yeah. do you guys think could be. nikolai could be. came from the um carpathian area that's right to the states and i have no idea oh. where carpathia <laughs> is <laughs> well uh carpathian mountains are north of romania i believe yeah n north of romania okay which is south of poland <laughs> you, think, right. of it, that, think of it in between europe and russia in that general area. So very, okay. That's very, where Romania is. very Eastern European. Yes, pretty very much. Eastern. Okay, very good. So now we know. We Some geographical. <laughs> we need. I want to look up. Car, I want to look up Carpathian stuff for our next episode because I just, it, yeah, I'm not really that familiar with gypsies, but um, I, yeah, Roma. It's it's so unique. It's like its own culture. Its own. It's it's like a nationality, but they're mm -hmm. just so transient. Mm -hmm. And and they, and because they're so transient, they get abused and they get they become a scapegoat for everything, right? Yeah. During yeah. World War II, yeah. Hitler blamed them just as much as the Jewish people for for being a part of causing Germany to fall. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Exactly. Oh yeah. Yep. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Stephen. Um, what do you guys think of like the significance of Roman actually doing this transformation? I mean, uh, Peter doing this transformation in front of Roman. I mean, he's supposed to not show anyone. I mean, I would assume, and then. We see at the end of the first episode, uh, Roman shows his power in front of Peter, which Peter didn't know about. And now in the end of the second episode, it's like the same thing. Like their relationship's kind of going pretty quickly. They're developing uh, yeah. a romance. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, I think so. and that's yeah. exactly it, because the mother of uh, Linda, you know, Peter's mom, said that Peter doesn't have a lot of friends. And then Olivia, in, in a future episode, says that Roman doesn't have mm -hmm. a lot of friends so they're building this relationship and they kind of know that something's up with each other like mm -hmm. there's a myster um, mysterious past with both of them so they they're just bonding in that way mm -hmm. if so we have a friend if we were to rewind a little bit regarding roman and peter what was up with the note being thrown in class and saying can i watch 
That, it's, that it's, was kind of awkward too. It was awkward also. I, I wanted thought to put it was that like down. a double entendre. Yeah, the, totally. exactly. Uh, <laughs> now I thought that was referring to him thinking that he killed the cheerleader. So he was asking what it was like to kill her, and can he watch the next time? Yeah, but that's. Mm -hmm. oh. It could have been that. I thought it was just Unless asking just to watch him trans transform, which it probably was. Yeah. Since at the end, that's yeah. what happened. But you know, at the fir at the end of the first episode, he was saying, "What was it like to kill her?" Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he so was. They're denied. fascinated by each other's. Yeah. You're right, JJ. And it even seemed like he that was even uh, ambiguous, too, because at the end of that scene, at the end of the first episode, he asks him that. And doesn't he kind of, like, not say, like, d if he killed her, like, straight up directly, right? Yeah, I think they ended it just to kind of, for drama. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and then we told actually, we totally forgot to talk about this, too, but Roman has some kind of powers as well. Because mm -hmm. at the beginning of episode yeah. two... What was that? He ends up compelling, it looks like, like a typical vampire yeah. thing. Yeah, yes. The, the, one of the police officers, one of those hillbilly police, <laughs> <laughs> to leave and say, hey, man, just leave us alone, my mom's going to kill me. And the other cop is like, dude, you creepy weirdo kid right. fine yeah, we'll go like and then his nose started yeah. bleeding yeah, yeah. it was there very like blood again like in true blood when they're glamored right which yeah. made me think of his exactly. brother at that point and i'm like this family <laughs> is just so talented and amazing yeah, it's like a push kind of deal it's like these aren't the droids you're looking for yeah <laughs> yeah know? like the uh, oh the jedi mind trick <laughs> yeah, the jedi yeah. Mind the trick. Mind trick. <laughs> these are not the droids you're looking for <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our next topic. <laughs> so an angel visits Letha in her bedroom at some point during episode two, kind of in the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah, in the beginning. And it's, it. I want to say it's not the typical looking angel, right? It looks like this dark form, and then it its wings come out, and then the wings are really light, but the form's still dark, and you can't tell what it is. And I'm having a premonition of an immaculate conception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit of an allusion to biblical stuff and Mary and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So what'd you guys yeah. think of that scene? I thought that, well, I thought that she was lying about the immaculate conception, about the angel, you know, coming. I mean, clearly she had the dream where the angel came to her, but the whole pregnancy part of it, I thought she was covering for Roman. That was, those were my thoughts for the longest time until I saw his reaction to finding out that she was pregnant and it wasn't his. Like, that whole situation just made me uncomfortable. <laughs> maybe, uh, Tiona, maybe that me that might just be because he's been using condoms this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? And he's like, no way! You no told way, me you were on the pill! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I oh, like the silhouette, though, because it goes back to the black and white. Mm -hmm. And it in does. the show, and it just shows mm -hmm. it could be anything, and it goes back to the ambiguity. Yeah, there's very enigmatic. Mm -hmm. It's very enigmatic. There's so ma so much ambiguity. There are so many ellipses in the show, and uh, and and I'm sure I want to say a part of me wants to say that the cousins are bump and uglies. <laughs> well, especially if Norman talks later about how he thinks she's just make you know like um, not making it up, but that like she actually got raped, and this is her way mm -hmm. of, of dealing with it. I forget what the, the term was. I wrote it down, but anyway, that could also kind of explain the while she's seen this angel thing, but there's also that dark black force in there that's maybe something else that was actually raping her. Mm -hmm. Psychedelic amnesia. That was it. Yep. Oh wow, that's what he said. <laughs> that's yeah. what he said that um, he thought was going on with Letha because mm -hmm. she was blocking out the fact that she was raped and pretending like it hadn't happened and that when she wakes up from it and realizes what happened, it's going to be too late and she's going to have this baby and a reminder and that's yeah. why he wants her to have the abortion. Now, I okay, remember in episode one, they have the killing happen of the cheerleader, Brooke. They go backwards three months beforehand and then we're, we're back to present day, right? So how far along did they say Letha was in her pregnancy? Did it, was it just like that, or was it like a few months already had well, passed? They, they showed the birth test, the, the pee on the stick test, mm -hmm. um, but we usually don't. How long do you I don't usually think they mention wait to take one of those? I want to say they I did. I would think I after say. she like missed a period, probably. And yeah, isn't it usually like, like you find out if you pee on the stick for... I don't know. <laughs> I want to say, mean. and our fans, please maybe re like let us know if you guys have caught this. Tweet at us, and uh, I, I feel like that they mentioned like, oh, it's been a few months already, or she's already three mm -hmm. months pregnant, something like that. They so, said it had been, wasn't it three months since the girl had been killed? 
but we don't know where in there the dream happened and where we she don't. became mm -hmm. pregnant. We don't. Because I didn't hear them say any amount of time that she's been pregnant, but I think they did say that Brooke had been dead for about three mm -hmm. months is what's coming to my mind. Yeah, so there was some kind of indicator there with that mm -hmm. time maybe coinciding with her getting pregnant. That's yeah, because she's I not think. showing. No, she yeah. isn't. At least not in that flapper's 20s mm -mm. dress she had going on. Yeah, and even the in the book, it doesn't really give a specific time frame of when that happened um, in context with everything else because it just shows that she took a test and that was it. She's pregnant. I have a feeling that it is an incestuous baby because why would they be showing so much... In the in the opening credits, they say they show so many monstrosities and like babies that are in the womb, and then they have like multiple legs, right? Like mm -hmm. almost like yeah. octopuses, and it's it just it makes me feel like that's a bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, and and also it goes. Um, there's that flashback in the first episode when Olivia talks about Roman was born with a call, so uh, I think that that might be another factor into um, different pregnancies in the show. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I, I think that about does it for episode. <laughs> <laughs> what about the guy they yeah. find on the road? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Pullman. Who? On their way home from the dance. Francis That's Pullman. He's talking about huge needles, and then he basically recognizes Roman and blames and scared of him. He yeah. did, and there was something mm -hmm. really important there. We've been talking about this, this serpent thing the whole episode. Ouroboros, he said Ouroboros, didn't he? I, I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that. I think yeah, he I did, because mm -hmm. I thought he was just talking gibberish yeah. at that point. But I remember him saying something about that. He was, that whole scene with him running through the woods made me think, everything he was saying made me think he had come out of Dr. Price's like mm -hmm. laboratory yes. because yeah. clearly that guy's back there doing something that no one knows about because Olivia and Norman get in a fight when she you know, has asked for an increase in budget and Norman doesn't want to give him more money. And she's like, well, I don't know what it's for. If you want to know, go ask Dr. Price. Mm -hmm. It's like no one knows what he's up to back there in his secret laboratory. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And another thing, Frances' right eye is kind of messed up too, just like Shelly's right eye is messed up. So oh, there, there, is some, there is something going on. Mm -hmm. There's a connection. <laughs> oh, I found it right here. He says, Ouroboros, and I saw the dragon. And then when he sees Roman, he says, I don't want to see this. Yeah. 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 And, you know, um, Roman does have, like, a creepy stare, right? Like, yeah. he, he gets so, yeah. he has big eyes. He gets so wide-eyed. Even just seeing him and the way he looks, I want to say he's, like, an incest baby. I want, I want to say that. I, I don't mean, know. He just looks creepy. He does. He's very piercing eyes. Mm -hmm. And they're big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what one thing I noticed, I mean, I'm not going to compare this series to Twilight at all, but the way that Roman kind of stares off reminds me of sort of the vampires in Twilight where they're just very loners. They're by themselves, usually not a lot of friends. And he just comes off as that creepy. So part of me wants to think that he is maybe a vampire or some sort of m magical creature as well. Maybe a hybrid vampire. Maybe a hybrid. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're doing vampire diaries, you know, <laughs> va vampire werewolf hybrid there. I don't know. Well, if nobody else has anything else to add, let's move into our news and gossip after Buzz TV news. Well, we got, um, I think, uh, we have a couple things, right? I got something really interesting that, that I'm kind of proud of, I must say. <laughs> uh, we were tweeting at some of the cast members. I tweeted at, uh, T at Tia Horn. I don't know her, her real name. Kenny it's, Tia Horn. It, it's kind of hard to say. Kenna Tia Horn? It's, it's spelled like Kenny Tia Kenna Tia Horn. Horn. We're so, probably butchering it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so anyway, I tweeted at her, and she retweeted my tweet, and I just said something kind of like, like, oh, I can't wait to see you, and I haven't seen her yet. I want to see her in the show. <laughs> um, yes. yeah. And then additionally, I also tweeted at Joel de, uh, de la Fuente, uh, who oh. plays Dr. Price, and I said to him, uh, it's, it's awesome how you piss off Norman Godfrey with a simple glance. Hashtag Hemlock Grove at uh, Serafina TV, that's yep. included you, <laughs> and at AfterBuzz TV. And he, uh, he, I think he just replied to my tweet, and he said, I do what I can. Smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. awesome. <laughs> I love that. Tiana, did you have some news? Well, mine's the same as Marissa's, so uh, wanna, well, I'll let her share it. <laughs> okay, um, according to Deadline.com, 
Uh, Netflix CEO says Hemlock Grove beat out House of Cards in the early viewings. Yes. Okay, that was pretty good. I'm excited mm -hmm. for that. So good for Netflix. They said they're feeling very excited about the original show. Um, it's a nice, a very nice redefinition of broadcasting for Netflix. So I'm very excited. It started off well. I'm not exactly sure the exact numbers, mm -hmm. but um, it, great ratings overall. I know that I'm digging the show, and I'm I'm sure yeah, I'm that I, I didn't take any screenshots, but I'm sure it was trending on Twitter on Friday night. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I the whole was. cast was tweeting this whole week about it. Yeah, yes. so um, was that about it? I think so. Yeah. Let's move into our predictions. So many predictions. Well, there's just so many different yeah. ways you could take predictions because we still don't know a lot like Marissa knows. Yeah. So, you know, we're I will still not piecing it. We're still no. piecing it together. Yeah. We decided we're also only going to have her read the, have her read the <laughs> she read the book and we're not going to read the book just so that we have different perspectives and we don't know everything that's coming up but or compare season but one, if there's a season 2. <laughs> I'm catching up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll begin with my prediction. Okay, I feel like um, we will find out that the baby is either Romans or some kind of experiment with the scientific research and development arm of Godfrey Institute. Mm -hmm. Which gives it kind of an anime feel to it. Yeah. I love it. Marissa? Oh, I'm not, I'm not you're participating not gonna, in this segment. JJ, well, there's so many, but I, I just, I, well, I guess I'll tap in something that we didn't talk about is how pissed that Olivia got when Norman was saying that it was over, that their um, mm. sexual relations were over, and he says, I meant it, and she has this look afterwards, you know, she knows that he did. So I think there's going to be some evil stuff coming her, I mean, that she's going to do to him because she's not going to take that very kindly. Tiana? I'm going to go with Peter and Roman's relationship that now that they both have kind of seen a glimpse into what the other one is capable of, that maybe they'll find a way to use their powers to do something. Not sure what they're going to do yet, but they're going to use these forces of nature and it seems like they're opposites, so maybe their opposite powers will attract and create magic because Peter did say something. I feel like something very important is about to happen. They'll take on Dr. Yeah. Price. So maybe they'll take on Dr. Price and bring down the whole establishment. Yes. <laughs> I will say that we are in works with getting people from the cast onto the show. It is confirmed that Lori Fortier, who plays Marie Godfrey, and yeah, she's great. going to be in next week for our Yay! show. Yay! Uh, yeah. Some big names coming up. Awesome. I, I predict, I want to see this and I hope it happens. I want to see Peter running around in wolf form doing mischievous things or wolfy stuff or, and, and I want to see him transform again into human because I, I hope they yeah. don't make it so there's an ellipse and we don't get to see him go back into being human. Yeah. I did read that um, Brian McGreevy who wrote the first book Go watch it. I mean, go read it. Go read it. Um, that uh, he's working on the second book right now. So there is a nice. it is a series. Well, thank you, Marissa. Yeah. <laughs> I think that about does it for our first podcast on Hemlock Grove episodes one and two. Thank you guys so much for joining us here. And if you guys want to, you can follow me at Sean Austin O on Twitter and tweet your predictions at me. Tweet anything, stuff that we missed. Where can we find you, Marissa? I'm on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at T W E E T E E two two. And I'm at JJ Jorgens on Twitter. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.